Hi, Shay Given here. You're watching Irish Football Fan TV. Hello and welcome back to Irish Football Fan TV. Today I'm joined by Owen Heary, Shelburne FC manager. Thanks very much for coming on, Owen. No, it's my, my pleasure. I'm delighted to be here. Um, just in terms of the season now, uh, it's, it's not far away. Now. How's, how's pre-season been? Yeah, it's gone well. We've uh, we brought in a few experienced players, you know, to add to what we had last year. Um, it's it's gone well. As I said, there's a couple of lads have had flu, which seems to be epidemic at the moment. But um, they've worked hard. So we've played bowls and we've played dirty and we've got two draws against them. So sorry, but surely we're we're getting our fitness levels up to the start of the season. Okay, and um, what, what kind of uh, goals can you have you set for yourself? For <laughs> Look, there's only one goal for us, and that's to to win the league. You know, and to get promoted. Um, the good thing is that the, the playoffs are back this year, so it gives us more than the one chance of going up. Last year, there's only one team that went up. This year, you know, you, if you finish fourth, you still have a chance of, of, of getting promotion, and that's that's the aim is to try to get promotion. Last year, I thought we lacked a little bit of firepower up front, so we brought in Davy O'Sullivan to, to add to that, and one or two younger strikers as well. So we're hoping that we're, we're there, thereabouts come the mix near the end of the season. Yeah, I mean, it'd be nice, obviously, Shells and Club with, with the history and stuff like that. Back really where it belongs yeah totally agree with you um, you know you, you can't keep relying on your history all the times you know you have to make new history and that's what we're, we're trying to challenge these younger players to do is to is to be part of Shell's history going forward where they get promoted and if create can get their up, own history yeah and, and if we can get up and stay up that would be a big goal you know we have to try stabilise the club in the Premier Division and become a top Premier Division team once more yeah um, now how, how has the transition been from a, from a player to a manager in terms, yes. Yeah, yeah, in, in terms, like when I was finishing playing, you know, Bowles uh, at the time, we were professional players full time, and we ended up going from winning the leagues to getting into money uh, difficulties there at Bowles as well. And Seems you know, to be an players. ongoing thing with the league. Yeah, it, it is, and you know, you, you can't blame the clubs because they're, they're trying to invest and they're trying to do things properly and trying to get the clubs going forward. And I think we've seen with Dundalk, they've managed to do that. You know, Cork managed to do that. So, um, at the time, Bowles were trying to didn't work out, a lot of younger players then come in, Pat had a, a lot of young talent come through through the ranks, the likes of Keith Buckley, Lopez, to name a few, they came through and then uh, eventually you know, Aaron took over and things didn't go quite so right, we were down struggling at the bottom of the table, so uh, the, you know, the club let Aaron go, Aaron Callahan go and asked me to take over for the time being until they got someone in, but thankfully results turned when I, when I took over and uh, managed to steer the club to, to safety and stay up in the Premier Division. So, in terms of you know baptism before going into into management, there's no better feeling than to going in and achieving the, of staying up the status of staying up and not getting relegated. Yeah, because Darius Kieran's actually when I met him a couple of weeks ago, um, which you can check out on the YouTube channel. Um, but uh, he was saying when he when he kept um, the dark up, that was his favorite moment of his career. Yeah, it was, and these were players that I was playing alongside. So I was going from playing alongside them. You know, as a captain and, and telling them what to do to stand on the sidelines and, and, and telling them what to do and I sort of took a back seat from playing because I remember when Pat was took over shells and he was trying to play and manage at the same time it was difficult I remember one game where uh, I think it was Pat's last game we were playing Pat's and at half time we were getting beaten well beaten and uh, you know he was having a pop, pop of me him and Johnny McDonald and I was having a rail back and he says you get sent off in this game you're going to be fine two weeks wages you know Went out and packed him on as a sub and packed on himself sent off. So, you know, when he's walking by me off the pitch, I wonder what's saying to myself that is he gonna get himself fine now in two weeks' wages, you know. <laughs> but it's difficult to do, you know, and I'm sure he had a hundred and one things going through his mind, especially losing the game, playing the game, trying to manage the game, you know, it's quite difficult. So I took the decision to take a step back and you know, the lads done great and as I said we stayed up and I come out for the last two minutes of the game up and draw there. So uh, that was uh, my last game that I played. Oh, okay. It was a nice achievement all the same, wasn't it? Yeah, it was great. You know, the Bowes fans come out and lift me on their shoulders and it was great. Really, really enjoyable moment. You know, and you don't, I wouldn't be one for celebrating staying up in a, in a division, but I can understand, you know, how how difficult the season it was for players and for fans. It's big for the club, too. Yeah, because yeah. they've never been One relegated. As well. You know, and coming from a, a person playing for Bowes and I supported Bowes as a young as a, as a young fellow growing up, I didn't want to be that manager at that. Bowles end up going down the first time the history year. and me being part of that so uh, it was great to, to keep him up and then we, we done well the following season and so on so delighted yeah. now just in terms of your, your career like Glenn Fitzpatrick one of your former teammates has actually asked um, how, how, how was the standard 
from when you started to you finish did it get better did it get worse what do you, what do you think yeah, when I first started I was like I started down with Kilkenny I was 16 years of age and I was going to a team with, with John Rayner and John Cleary and these were experienced players you know tough experienced players like you know I, I'm sitting there one day in the dressing room and Jimmy Donnelly's beside me and he takes out his teeth you know and I'm looking at him saying my god what have I got myself into here like, yeah. but they were tough tough boys and uh it was it was a tough league back then. It was difficult playing. That you know you get kicked from pillar to post, and then when we go into the the shells area of the two thousands, I think it was probably the, the best area ever. Where you had full time football, you had very very good talented players on every team. You know. Yeah, it's Cork and that were doing well as yeah. well at the and time. Not only that, you you're looking and you're saying like shells are tipped to win the league, but balls could be tipped to win the league. It could be Derry, it could be Cork. You had every team. I think that had a chance. You had a good UCD team. You know, so yeah, you knew when you were going in every week was a difficult game to play. Like you had good players in every team, good centre forwards in every team, good defenders in every team. So I think it was a difficult area where it was tough to win a league. You know, and then you come into into now, and I think you've realistically, realistically, you've only got two, maybe three teams that can win the league. I'd, I'd say two teams that beat Dundalk or Cork. Yeah, you know, maybe, maybe that, Rovers. Well, I think Rovers over the last year, you know. Probably they've been well off the mark of where they where they should be a team that should be up challenging. The same with Pats, you know. Um, you look at Dundalk; they've been consistent over four years. Cork have been the same; they've been second, 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 first. So between those two teams, it's been every year. You know, can Rovers break in and break that stride? I don't know. Like if they can do it this season, it's a tough ask. But um, they brought in some some talented young players as well. But I just think Dundalk or Cork will have too much for for most teams. Okay, um, just. In terms of your, of your own career, and obviously we're talking about uh, when you played, and, but who who would have been the most talented player that you you'd played with and against? Well, to me, the most talented player is Wes Hillingham. You know, when I've had this discussion with a few because I played with Cheryl, who's a gifted player, Pat Fennan, another gifted player, but Wes to me is, is probably the best player I've seen playing the league and ever, he, ever, yeah. And the reason being, you know, you're looking at him. He's, I mean, a really, really young lad when he came in, you know, yeah. and. Uh, He's the jersey was hanging out in the shot, and but he no fear when he played. He was able to turn a game, turn players inside out, and the fact that he was he was blind as a bat as well, you know, it made everything just so real. Because we were going to a match one day, and uh, he said to Richie Baker, "Could you stop and get his contacts on the way down?" So we're dropping down, and Richie goes, "Look, there in Cabra, there's a, a chemist," and he ran into the butcher's next door, and the butcher had to tell him that the chemist. Was <laughs> there. And then that's that's how we're looking at him, saying he can't say a thing, the fella, you know. So. He's gone in and he, he got the contacts on and he became even a better player. You know, and I said against Deportivo, he was the best player on the park, you know, over both games. I think he, was, he showed his true talent in, in those two games and the people were able to watch and see him at such a high standard against some very, very good opposition. You know, and really. Yeah, Valeron would have been one of the best players yeah, in Europe yeah. at the time. And, and, and you're looking, you're saying, like, Wesel had no fair playing against him, kept the ball, was able to go by players, was able to create stuff, and. Uh, the unfortunate thing for me is that he went the long way around to get to where he is today. You know, he had to go to Scotland and down to Blackpool and Norwich. You know, if I look and say if he was English, he wouldn't have gone that route. He'd have been at that age. People would have been raving about him, and he would have been straight into the English setup. And you know, you look at Wayne Rooney. They raved about him when he was 16, and I think Wazo would have been the exact same. That at that young age, he would have been talking about him. That's some serious praise. Um, did you ever play against Wazo? Because that would answer that question. Only in training. Oh, okay. <laughs> Only in training. I was able to kick him down in training. Oh, okay. Did you ever get near him? I was able to kick him. That's, no, that's okay. about it. I wasn't getting near the ball, I'd get near Wes up. Um, no, as, as you do. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, as we do. On the seventh day of Carly, had a had a thing that if I didn't get him, he had to get him. Like, so. No, we would so many talented players back then at Shells. You know, Tony Sheridan, as I say, was another gifted player. Like, you know, He could change games and, and do things. But to me, Wes was just that little bit ahead of him, I think. Yeah. Now, just in terms of uh, playing it against... Like your toughest opponent, probably. Yeah, it's a it's a difficult one, you know. You have to say Ali Cattle was was a tough opponent when I was played against him because he had pace as well, like you know. And we used yeah. to have good battles. Roy O'Donovan, he was a hard, you know, quick, but he was also very physical. He could leave the foot in, and he caught me once or twice in it, you know. And then you you look at left folds, you have Desi Bourne, who was another tough lad to come over the top. But I think in terms of of a game, you know, where you're saying right, you have to be at your Max and your peak, I think Ali Cattle would be that, that person where you know you, you knew you were 
Not that he was he wasn't dirty or anything like that, but you knew he was good and he paid. You knew you were for a game. Yeah, you, you knew you were going to have it because where's your playing? Um, you know whether it was Tony Board or Pats, you knew you were in for a more physical game. But with Ali, it was more of a skillful game that he had. He could get up and down the line and and get crosses in. So I think in terms of that, it was it was the toughest uh, opponent. And you know I know people say about European games when you have tough opponents, but you only play them once. Whereas you've played Ali. So many games, like it's yeah, it's and even that you think it might get easier because you think you might know what he's going to do, but that's uh, obviously the better players, they yeah, they do on a, they adapt a game level, and yeah, and you know, they change their game and, and do things. And Mark Rutherford would be another one like that, you know, that you knew you had to be on the at the top end of the game to to make sure that they don't have the best game that they're going to have. You need to be make sure that you're on your, your A game to okay. Uh, is there anyone you thought could have kind of went on to a better level? Um, Back then and uh, now, currently in the league, is there anyone you think could spoil well, on? Yeah, I, th- I think looking back then, you know, I say uh, Jason Bourne. I know he did have a, a moment there where he, where he came on for Ireland and things like that and over a card up. But I think Jason Bourne, if they took him when he was at his peak, definitely could have had a, a good career in, in England. You know, he um, looking at him, he could score with his left foot, right foot. Head of goals, penals, penals. You know, he kicks even. Three, yeah, he's a prolific goal scorer. You know, and as I said, he's he wasn't far off finishing top goal scorer ever in the league. So it shows you how good he was. Like you know, and he took a year, year out when he went to Cardiff. If he'd have stayed here for another that year, he would have definitely broke the record. Yeah, without you know? injuries, definitely. Yeah, yeah. But I, I definitely think he could have played at a higher level. Um, I think there was a lot of players that could have played at a higher level. Going back to that era, um, as I said, further the field, I, I think now. It's very hard to see many players making that transition of going over to England. I know a few lads have gone over, but haven't quite made it. Um, but looking back now, I definitely think Jay Bourne was that one player that probably missed out on having a career in England. Yeah, Emily and his cousin, love you. Yeah, well, it shows you that it must run in the family. The two of them know where the goal is, and, and you know, Robbie's been prolific for Ireland, been prolific everywhere he's gone. And Jay yeah, Bourne. it's a fun two of them, too, for Ireland. That's just, you know. Who knows? Who knows? It probably would have been uh, would have been good to see, but definitely think Jay is one of those players that missed that boat. Like you know, yeah. um, looking at look, looking at the leagues now over the last season or two, like, it's hard to say who could make that transition up. Like I mean, Christopher Forrest is a good player. He's gone over to England. He got a he played yesterday. He got well beaten in the in the FA Cup, and um, but it's great to see that he's he's playing at a high level. He could be the next one that will make that step up for Ireland. You know, Shani McGuire, I definitely think, can make that step up. Another centre forward. And I think it's probably a little bit easier for, for centre forwards. I don't mean that in a bad way. I think with defenders, you know, if they make mistakes and get and they get punished for it, yeah. Then people saying, oh, he's not good enough. Where a centre forward could miss a couple of chances, you know, and still get and get one. Yeah, and still get another couple of chances and get that goal. You know, people say, oh, he's in the right position to take the chances. And you look at Long, for instance. Long has gone. A, you know, I was going to say a long time to give us a pun, but he's hasn't scored yeah, in a good yeah. while. You know, I think it was a year, maybe more. Yeah, he scored then, recently. Then he scored. Yeah, yeah, but before that, he hasn't been scored, and he was still playing for Ireland. Yeah. So you can see the difference with centre forwards and, and defenders. Like it's a bit more. Same thing with the Ballon d'Or, isn't it? You know, yeah. No, no defenders yeah. like Cannavaro. I think was the last. Yeah. Defender. Yeah. It's mostly it's mostly strikers that get the praise. You know, but as as uh, going back, we used to say that a striker will win you a game, a defender will win you a league, and, and a keeper. Yeah, I've asked someone to keep. So <laughs> they're only as good as the defenders in front of them. Yeah. Um, just uh, in terms of your career, so what what would have been your your favourite moment as a player? I've had a God, I've had a lot, a lot of good moments. And you've been obviously playing. very yeah. successful, played some great teams. Yeah, I've played with some great teams, some great players, some great managers. You know, I remember even first game, one of the first European games down in um, down in Talca Park, and we were playing. Uh, a team from Macedonia and uh, they were about to go through the, the lob willow and the ball was about to go tr- go over the line to make it them to go away in the goal difference and I managed to get back and hook her over the bar onto the, the top of the net and we end up going through you know and the next day you see that picture in the paper and you're like oh, this is great you know so remember the moments that stick out like even winning leagues and you know but the ones that the scars the ones that always stick out is the ones that you lose you know you always think back and say oh, what have I done this what have I done yeah, that yeah. but my personal favourite moment is when walking out against Deportivo over there. Not for the fact that you're playing Deportivo, but I had my son with me as mascot, and he done mascot over there, four years of age, and he was there to walk out onto the pitch. Is such a WhatsApp profile picture? Yeah, and I have him. Um, he's uh, he's 19 years of age now, 
and uh, no. you know, and I, I show him the posters and bring it back. And he's no interest in football, you know, he's no interest. But it's it's a day that he remembered and I remember, you know, for for that special moment. Especially, is it, what, how much would that is staying of held? Oh God, a good, a good amount. Anyway. Yeah, yeah, it was it was a good. They were one of the best teams in the league, obviously. The yeah, time. and it was it was a great moment, as I said. But it's not for the, the fact of playing them. It was the fact of him walking out with me over there, like you know. So really enjoyable moment. And if you see the the team photo, he's standing there beside me. So uh, and I have the photo signed by every player, and I have him signed it as well when he was young. So you know that that's really signature when they're only learning how to to write their names. That's there we saw it, the likes of Wessels, the likes of mine, the likes of Jamie Harris, Rogers, yeah. all their signatures on it. So it's something that uh, I'm proud of and I have a hell of a you know, memory there in, in the in my shed, in my man cave as they say. And they have a man cave, yeah. No, I have one there, yeah, I have one there with all the memorabilia oh, and things like that, so it's always nice to have. Now you touched on Jamie Harris then, you're telling me a funny story, yeah, uh, coming off air there. With the Lille game. Oh the, yeah, we um we were two 0 down to Lille yeah. at, at home and I suppose uh, Fitz will probably tell you this one as well, but you know J- uh, Joseph and Dole played in the game, and he was he was injured, you know, and he, he said he was fit enough to play, and there was a few things going on, and little niggles in between our own our own players. So Pat Fennell was suspended for the game, so he was up in the stand, and Naaman Collins was taking over, and big Derek McGuinness, big security fella down the door, and we were in a half time, and a row broke out between me and Joe and Dole, you know, hammering each other, and there was a row broke out between Jamie Harris and Dave Rogers, and. There was rails breaking out all over the place, and Eamon Collins is on the phone, on the phone to pass saying, Pat, they're all killing each other, they're all, you know, at each other. Yeah. And Big Derry McGuinness had to burst open the door and separate players and calm us down and everything, you know. And uh, I think it was something that spurred us on because we went down to the second half and we came from 2 0 down to 2 all. And, you know, I think teams need that at times. And um, us back then, we were always able to have a row with each other. And, I mean, we had digging matches with each other and things like that, and we'd still go out and ready to perform. Because we knew it was always for the better of the team, yeah. yeah. Um, and I said that that happened. Like if we lost two games in a, in a row, there'd be chaos. There'd be absolutely like it's a crisis, yeah. you know. And again, we'd have a row. And I used to have a thing with Pat, where as I say, well, I'll start a row here just to get fellas motivated, get go- fellas going, and yeah. you could see the reaction then the following week or the follow- or that game to to pick us up and, and get going. But yeah, that one uh, really sticks out because if Pat wasn't there and he's on the phone, what's going on? What's going on? And they went, they're killing each other. They're all killing each other. But it he's was probably good. like lovely. <laughs> yeah, he did. Pat's probably saying what you know because he's probably trying to tell us this is what they're doing wrong on the pitch and we're not listening. And so big Derek who's seven foot all just come in and the hands are just separating everyone yeah. everywhere. So uh, it's you know we, we look back and then we have a laugh about it and things like that. And yeah, it's like, always saying to you now. Yeah, he still you know talks over if you ever scored in Europe and things because like he come on and scored two goals. But uh, as I said, well, very similar goals as well, weren't he? Two headers, two yeah. headers, yeah. And so you know, we, uh, as I said, we, we've. Hadn't many. I, that's why I, I look back now and I say, uh, you see, training sessions. There be fights in training sessions where I was like, I'd probably involved in most of them. You know, we'd yeah. have a rare with Jamie. Should Dave McGee saying about uh, Richie <laughs> Ford and yeah, people. Dave McCall and Richie Ford. Like, we'd all have fights, but you know, and we'd we'd leave the training pitch because no one wanted to lose a training match. Believe it or not. So that's why we were so wound up and aggressive yeah. because it's a weird actually, attitude. Yeah, we we trained the way we play, and uh, you know, we'd go down. But as long as it's not taken off the field. You know, yeah. you shake hands, you move on, you walk down, say ground. But that's uh, that's how intense our training sessions were. Like, is that we would physically go in as if we're playing an opposition that we hated or we wanted to be. You know, and that's the way we trained back then, and still train. I I still train like that, I suppose. But yeah, uh, yeah, it was it was good. Like when you look back and you see the rails and the teams, and you are still mates at the end of it. It's, it's always shows you what a team that you had and what a team spirit we had. Exactly, and I'm sure like once you like. Anyone knows that like, you'd be fighting with uh, on the pitch one minute and the next minute they score or something. He's their best mate. Like, yeah, that, like, course, you know, and, that. and that's sometimes that that happened. You know, someone on the pitch might need to kick up the arse, and you know, you, you'd rather shout at Jay to, to do things. He'd rather at me. If I'm a winger getting by me once or twice, you know, we say, you know, get the finger out and start doing things properly. And I think you needed that, like, you yeah, know, you know, and all teams, all top teams, I think need that. And I've, I've seen it, you know. I've seen it throughout the years and I've listened to people saying, Oh, to see those two fellas fighting on the pitch with each other. We, we don't realise like they're fighting on the pitch with each other to encourage each other to get them going. I don't mean throwing digs at each other on the pitch, but roaring and shouting and making sure that they're, they're at it like Yeah. The Dermot Keely, uh, Dermot Keely especially uh, sent me a, a WhatsApp message the other week to um, with all when I was having you on and he wanted uh, you to list his um worst eleven. 
<laughs> his worst eleven, yeah, I, I can imagine that some of the players that some beauty, like yeah, some, some, some beauty, as he would put it. <laughs> well, you know, with with them, uh, them either like or I didn't. That was it. There was no in between. In between, he just this is what it is. And I remember once where um, he was managing home farm Everton, and he brought over Stephen Archibald, who would have played for Barcelona and played for Man United, Spurs, you know, an absolute legend. And uh, he brought him and a fellow called Alan Snodden over. So. Walked into the dressing room and he sees fellas are looking at you know Steve Archibald who's like God to half of them and they're in the dressing room we get changed and Damon goes keep giving him the ball like you know so we're all there right he's going to do something he's going to do some magic so we kept giving him the ball and we played a very good Derry City team and uh, Derry were top of the table and they, they kicked us from pillar to post half time came I think we were 3 3 1 down and Damon goes um, alright Stephen off you get so Steve McGuinness starts taking a stop off and he goes, what are you doing? He said, you just have to tell me, not you, see you Archibald, you can get your gear, you can F off out of here, and, you know, go on the plane and I think people were stunned that he's had to talk to this legend of a game, the way he was speaking to him, but he made him get his gear half time, out of the dressing room, out of the gate, out back to the airport. And I remember Steve Archibald, there was a piece in the paper saying he, he's never come across a manager like Dan McKeeley, like, you know, and that's the way Dan it was, it was either that way or that way and yeah. he took that way he's he like that he's a teacher, yeah he is and you yeah, know I used to love him I'll be honest with you he, he taught me how to defend and he um, he was he used to roar and shout at me but he used to encourage he used to inspire, inspire me on or encourage me or whatever it did it worked yeah. you know and there's some people couldn't do it I remember Ray Duffy was in the demo walked in one time and uh, he said has anyone got any, anything to say yeah, we're all looking around no 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 nothing to say no, no, no. And then the next minute has a paper rolled up in his hands. Anyone out to say? No, next minute. Boom. He gave Ray Duffy a smack of a cross. He said, I said enough of it in the paper. He had a, he was hammering down in the paper and he didn't know. And Dama clobbered him with the with the paper, you know, and uh, we're all looking at him. That's what Dama was like, you know. If you are talking about uh, Dama Keady's beauty, as he, as he wants to call it, I mean, there was a keeper, Brad Jones, who um, played for Liverpool. But he played one game for, for us as Shells in a 6 4 game that we won against Bowles. And, um, you know, first, I, I thought he couldn't get near the goals, but Dama wasn't having it. You know, Dama's chocolate hands, he called him and everything. And he was one of his, his beauts. Then he had, uh, I know, you know, I don't agree with half of, half of the players that he'd probably think, I think some of them are, are decent players, but he then, he had the Downey brothers who we brought in, and he had a, another fellow called Neil Treble, who we called Neil Terrible, you know, uh, who, Damn it! One day he told him to, to run and try cross the ball, and the, this is a train, and the fellow knocked the ball so far ahead of him in Talca that he ran, and the gate, one of the the, the emergency exit gates, so yeah. it was open, and the other ran into it, and that's when Damn said, "That's Neil Terrible," and that was it. He got his name. He never played. He brought in Martin Gritton, he'd Johnny Powell, Car Van Levelden, and um, I think after later on he had a fella called Max Cream from America who played for Shells. I think he played for Cove as well, but. He had he had some some players all right that he, he is that with. eleven? Oh, you know, he could, he could be here all day with some yeah, people, okay. <laughs> but um, no, he did. He he he, you know, he, he always brought these players in, and I don't think he always gave them the best chance. It was yeah. you know you had to hit the ground running with them, as I said. Like and if if you weren't doing it straight away, if you weren't a winger putting in five crosses in the game from more go or taking on the fullback, you went for him straight. Yeah. Or if you didn't do the walk. Damn it! I always wanted his team to work hard, and that's why he was, he's very successful as a manager and as a player because his teams definitely worked hard. Like you know, if you look at it, myself and Richie, you know, if I was up, you know, trying to overlap Richie, you can guarantee that Richie was running back trying to defend for me as well. Yeah, like, just uh, covering. Yeah, he, and he, you had to have that in your, in your teams, and he and he did. He had that in abundance, I think, with the players he had. Like, and I think if you speak to even Pat Fenn and tell you that best manager, one of the best managers he had, you know, and. Um, and I was, I was the same, you know, we used to love playing for him. And I remember him signing me for Shells. Uh, he, he rang me, he, he actually took three players down from, from home farm. Damien Mayer, Damien Mayer could be another one he'd put in there. But Damien Mayer, Stephen Gifford, and uh, who else did he bring down? He, he, at, at top of your head, I can't think, but he, he brought them down. And um, he never asked me to go down. And I, he had me playing as an outside right. And after that, he rang me. And when they were playing Rangers, he said, look, I want you to come down and put pressure on Desi Baker. And I said, I was where? He said, as an outside right. And I said, all right, no problem. So he ended up signing me for less than what I was on at Howard Farm because he got me drunk. 
Yeah. And he, uh, he, you know, Bearman could well drink, and I couldn't. And he, uh, I had to ring him the next day and ask him how much I signed for, and he told me it was on a lot less than what it was at home farm. But uh, we went in, and things weren't working out. And I remember Pat Fenlon coming in the dressing room and meeting. You know, I wasn't playing at the time, but the three boys were. And he said, "You ain't good enough to play for this club." You know, and hammered the hammered the lads that were playing. And, you know, Bama goes around, well, what do you think? And what do you think? And lads wouldn't answer. He said, what do you think to me? And I said, well, I'll prove you wrong. I can play with this club. And I had a pop back, a pat, you know. And cut a long story short is that I ended up having a, a good career at, at Shells and the other lads were, were let go and went. And as I said, it, it worked out for me. But I can understand where Pat was coming from. You know, you could be a, you could be a good player in a, a smaller club because there's no expectation to win games week in, week out. But when you go to a Shells, the Bowers were overs. At that time, at yeah. that, any any of the top clubs, the pressure was on that you had to perform week in, week out. You know there was no in between. It was just make sure you were at it. And I can see where Pat was coming from at the time. Like you know, so it's only now we can see. Back then, I was like, who was this fella? I think he is. Like yeah. you know, and that's why I had a good relationship with Pat then along the way as well. And but that's where Damon's mentality was all about. That the hard work will pay off if you keep doing it properly. Like so, yeah, quite enjoyable. You know, quite enjoyable. I said. Uh, you know, and the Shells fans are always great fans. I went to Bowes then, same thing. I had to work hard because Bowes fans were looking at me saying, oh, this is, you know, from the rivals coming. Or again, I worked hard there and they got behind me then. And, and the same thing happened. We won trophies along the way. And I think overall, you know, it worked out for me as a career boys. Yeah. You know, I have a couple of questions from a couple of fans. Uh, just uh, to ask you, hang on, I'll get them for you now. Um, so Dwayne Green asks, um, "What is your most treasured shirt swap? Most treasured and uh, your most treasured football possession?" To be honest, I, I I was never into swapping shorts with with uh, opposition. You know, they'd have to ask me. I wasn't one of these that take the show out. I'm playing against yeah. someone. Um, so the shorts that I would have got, like I mean, of Joseph and Dolls short when he played uh, internationally, he played for Shells. Of Wes Hulahan's Ireland jersey. Or of Michael Colonna's uh, international jersey when he scored against Romania. Um, Roy King Roy, I've, I've the pennant which is probably the most you know prized possession in terms of football I have uh, Roy King's first game back in Ireland after Saipan was Man United against Shells and I have the pennant with the date and Man United versus Shells and it's signed by Roy King so that's probably the, the one that, that I have in the frame that will stand out for me but in terms of jerseys I have the likes of Luke Hayes jersey and things like that um, but Albert Luke, wasn't he? he went yeah, to Newcastle. He went to Newcastle after, but he he wasn't meant to play. He was. I was told before we played Deportivo that um, Pat Fennan said to me, he "said Look, Real Madrid had to put an eighteen million pound bid in for him, so I don't think he'll travel." And I'm like, "Great, you yeah." Know? yeah. And then uh, Pat gets the, the traveling list of who's coming, and he said, "Sorry, oh, yeah, he's going to be playing." So just starting to get that little jittery team, but I enjoyed the battle against them and. You know, when did, he play, to, did he play against Ireland in the World Cup? Or he was, he was in the squad, wasn't he? Quite possibly. Yeah. You know, really? um, but he said after the game, then he, he came over to me and, and he handed me his jersey. So you know, I was quite chuffed with that. Like so, you know, things like that is great. But I never go looking for for people's jerseys in games. And as I got older, even the friendlies that we played, I wasn't into playing the friendlies. You know, I used to yeah. say to Pat, look at we miss out on this friend. You can play one of the younger fellas. Whether it's to playing Liverpool or that, for a younger player to play against them would have been better yeah. than, than me playing against them. So yeah, I, I have a couple of jerseys like that. That it'd be more. I've even Keith Fatty's one before he went away. He played against Drotten and his Pat's jersey was, was ripped. Or his Drotten the jersey, were, the Pat's one was ripped. And uh, I said I, I had that jersey as well. Like So things like that, you know, I keep more League of Ireland jerseys than, than uh, English jerseys. Yeah. Um, Barry Rojak asks, um, what was it about St. Declan's that produced so many brilliant footballers, GAA and soccer? Yeah, it's a tough question. That um, I think back then, being from Cabra, there was a lot of players that were... That were you know were into all sports, into GAA, into football, into the whole lot. Like and a lot of them did go to, to Declan's College, and you know the Brogans, you had Paul Keegan, you had Partridge, you know, time a few even basketball. We've or you know Irish international basketball players. I don't know what it is, whether it's just that that area or that kind of time that everyone just seemed to, to do well. Like you know, um, you know I, I can't put my finger on it, but they do seem to produce players a, a lot. Like you know and. It's it's a net you know it's a it's a sporty school as well because they do hurling they do the Gaelic they have football they have running they have basketball you name it even the the teachers that they, that are there you have John Caffrey who's won an All Ireland with Dublin you know you have, um, Senna Connell who's again another Dublin you know so 
they seem to produce them whether that's to do with the people that are in there you know pushing the lads on because they've been there themselves but then I'll so be able to I honestly can't put my finger on why so many come out of there class. it just happens to kind of yeah I just think it was that, that thing. Way, yeah. yeah yeah I think you go through most skills you know a lot of players would have would come that you know in a certain area they say oh look at all them players that are coming through so I don't know what it is about it yeah, yeah well, uh, that's all the questions uh, I have for you. Um, thanks very much for coming on. It's been an absolute pleasure to have you on. Yeah, I'd love privilege. to have you on again sometime. Yeah, my privilege. I really enjoyed it. It's always good cool talking, you know, about football and about League of Ireland, especially. Like, I really enjoy it. Reminiscing. Reminiscing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, guys, if you liked this video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. And um, if you would like to see any other Shells players or managers, League of Ireland, Premier Division, Division 1. Uh, get in touch, leave your um, thoughts in the comments and thank you very much for watching Irish Football Fan TV. Have a great day.